back at the cabin for another little adventure. It's getting pretty late in the evening today. And since I'm at the cabin, there's always something to do. So I thought I'd bring you guys along. I'll do a little bit of uh, maintenance on my saw, on my axes and such. Cause I'm always splitting firewood and chopping down trees. It's pretty rough on the equipment, even if that's what it was made for. So I'll bring you guys along, do a little bit of log cabin equipment maintenance. This is always kind of stuff to keep in mind. Equipment maintenance and stuff. Especially when uh, like me, I'm not like three days away from a, a hardware store or something. It doesn't really matter if you are or not. I'm probably like 20 minutes away. <clears throat> 25 minutes, maybe. I don't know, half an hour, I don't know. But uh, you just kind of have to keep your stuff. People think just because you're off-grid or uh, self-sufficient that you kind of need to keep your stuff brand new all the time. It's not really the, the part, I guess, of the way of life because people that are in the woods, you know, people that are just not really, doesn't you don't have to be living there, but you kind of we use our stuff, so... Uh, you know, it goes like for anything like boots or shoes or something. If you're using it to get around and you don't have an immediate replacement, uh, your boots are a pretty big part of your kit. So that kind of factors in, kind of like my saw, because I pretty much cut logs, get firewood, just as important as an axe. Some people might think that an axe is a a little bit easier to maintain because you don't always have to sharpen it but a saw is just as easy if you don't hit rocks and stuff uh, the chain isn't really dinked up and it's pretty easy to sharpen you just uh, need two files one round one flat so one for the teeth and one for the rakers and you're good to go So yeah, pretty easy equipment maintenance here. Uh, always very important, have the proper gas 
the oil ratio because these are two stroke engines and you will blow them up if uh, you don't have proper gas and oil mixtures so I'm just gonna check the air filter in the back. Super simple, and this is a, I believe, 90s model saw to early 2000s, so very simple. Newer saws have, the stills at least, have three type locking screws around. Uh, this one just has one in the back to get to the carb and the air filter, so super easy. You have your scrunch. If you have a saw, super common that it'll come with a scrunch. So this is the tool you need for the saw. This one is a flathead, newer models have Torx, but this is a flathead. And you have the wrench for the bar nuts right here on the side. I won't be touching the chain and bar today, but I don't know if this, yeah, so this one, you don't even need a screwdriver. This one's in good shape. So yeah, you kind of, I just unscrewed it with my bare hands, a quarter turn and it comes out. But yeah, pretty much to dismantle your saw, this is pretty much the only tool you'll need for maintenance, for everyday maintenance at least. I like saws, they're just very common man uh, orientated, I guess. You don't need a whole bunch of material, nothing like that. Uh, yeah, so. Air filter is screwed on though, so. Move the good old lantern over here. Get, get a crazy amount of light. And there's your air filter. I would really need an air compressor, but I uh, don't really have that right here. So uh, yeah. And these nuts are riveted into the air filter. So awesome still design. <clears throat> I'll just grab this lantern, show you guys real quick, tilt a little bit. And you could see, I'm not sure if you guys could see it, but how dirty this air filter is. Uh, you can see all the clogged, uh, the, the mesh and all the pores. It's clogged pretty bad, so I'll need to get a new filter or even bring this one and whenever I have the chance to use an air compressor, blow it out. But for now, uh, just blowing on it will do. Yeah. <clears throat> you don't wanna, blow on it while it's in it's in place because you'll just blow all the air straight into the carb and that will go straight into the engine so all the scrap is going to go in the engine so that's pretty bad next up to stay on the saw subject i'll put my bar oil in a metal jerry can in this bag because as you'll see in five seconds Around these parts, the squirrels and the mice are extremely vicious. I uh, They ate the metal, my metal can in the back. You can't have plastic because as you can see here, they shred right through it. They love plastic. I don't know why, but they just eat it and poop it out just as fast. Uh, so this bar oil being oil, I don't want it everywhere. I don't want them to get a taste of this thing. It, it smells pretty sweet. So if I were to ever, and this is new, but if I were ever to touch somewhere on here with food or even the oil itself, they will chew right through the bottle and it will make a huge mess. So I got myself just a metal jerry can here. I've had it for months, if not almost a year. I just never used it. And I have used a lot of these things got them like a military surplus or I don't really know what it is but they're nice people 
and I go there pretty often, so yeah. I emptied out the blue plastic bag just to show you guys that it comes with a rubber nozzle that goes on top of a metal nozzle. And go figure, I have a, I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have a piece of corn, corn cob. So no idea where that came from. There's not fields anywhere around here that I can recall. I've been coming here forever. So I don't know where a piece of corn cob came from. But scroll mentality, I guess. So yeah, start pouring this oil in here. Lock this up. I usually don't put this metal latch on here. I don't think a squirrel's strong enough to flip the latch and if he is, well, I don't know what the hell he's being. It's starting to get dark quick, but the days are getting a little bit longer. So at least there's that. But for the axe, it's a good old double bit axe. Not sure how, how much light my lantern's giving off here, but yeah, double bit axe. Uh, Pretty simple. I'll just use the coarse side. The splitting thicker bit is more messed up, but nothing. A good old hand axe sharpener, a good old puck, can't fix. Use water, whatever. Spit is more oily, so it does the job. It helps it cut a whole lot easier and does not wear out the stone. So yeah, I don't have water right now. But I do have saliva, so. I will really need to I've only done it once, but oil the pack. I'll put some Danish oil or some linseed oil on here just because I use it so often and this thing has walked uh, quite a few uh, kilometers to the, to the woods and brush. So I don't want it to get damaged. I don't want the wood to dry out or get dry rot in it, get really brittle. So I'll need to uh, oil this up, but just by touching the wood, I see it's not super dry. There is, once again, much, much more to do, but uh, it is pretty much the end of the day right now. It is almost eight o'clock, seven to eight o'clock, I believe. So it is getting pretty dark, as you guys can see. The cabin looks awesome though. And my lanterns are doing what they were designed to do a few hundred years ago. So, and they're still going strong. But like I said, a lot to do. I'd have to clean all my lanterns. Uh, I need some type of product like Windex or a window cleaner, but I just don't have any here because it will freeze and the bottle will explode. I usually just use newspaper. I try to make them smoke as less as possible, but it's life they get dirty with dust and soot and whatever. So yeah, I'll uh, call it a uh, good evening at the cabin. Well, thanks you guys for watching. Uh, once again, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. And leave a comment if you guys realize or you, you notice I, I'm missing something or you just like me to answer a question leave it in the comments I am glad to answer your guys comments I do my best so thank you guys for watching